on Larry King now, legendary actor Tom Berenger. Yeah, it's kind of like Butch Cassidy, Sundance Kid sort of humor. We have those two guys on the road, you know, constantly b***ing at each other. And a little bit like Nicholson and Randy Quaid in The Last Detail, that, that kind of humor. Uh, you think actors will soon be replaced by holograms? I think it's going towards that. I think that could happen. I mean, and you think about it, could they just steal Humphrey Bogart's image or John Wayne's and then create them again? Plus, these three guys come walking up to me. One was a grandfather, one was a son, and one was the, his son, grandson. Three generations, and they were all like talking about Major League. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Today's guest, Golden Globe and Emmy-winning actor Tom Berenger. He's best known for his Oscar-nominated role in the 1986 film Platoon, as well as the ever-popular Major League. Tom will star in the upcoming American Dresser, out in theaters on September 21st. 30 years since Platoon and Major League. You still get a lot of talk about those films? Oh, constantly. Those, particularly those two. And sometimes Sniper. Yeah, and boy, were they different, those two films. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a reboot of Major League? I don't think so. They, I just heard rumors and rumors and rumors and rumors, and and I even talked to David Ward, the writer-director, about it once, but I just don't think that's going to happen. When you got that script, did you know how funny it was? Oh, I thought it was hysterical, um, and I, I thought because it was baseball, that would, you know, help it commercially and stuff, and it did. But it's because uh, baseball doesn't change much, uh, uh, and I and I did think it would be successful. And they released it on the uh, opening day of baseball, which I thought was pretty cool. That, the following spring, and um, as in one one kind of nice tribute uh, out of all of them up for that was I was in a coffee shop in Connecticut visiting my son, and. Um, I went out one morning just to have, you know, a little breakfast and coffee and read paper, and I'm in this coffee shop, and these three guys come walking up to me. One was a grandfather, one was a son, and one was a, his son, grandson. Three generations, and they were all, like, talking about Major League. And the middle one, the son, had played a couple years with the Yankees, too. So it, it, it was, I go, you know what? This is great, three generations. And I said, when I'm dead and all of you are, they'll still be watching this, yeah. Every time it comes on, you can't turn it off. It's <laughs> too funny. Okay, American Dresser, tell me about it. Two guys, uh, best friends, they happen to both live in little different towns in Long Island. One is going, the drinking problem and, you know, kind of post-war trauma. Also, his wife has passed away. And he's having problems with his, his daughter, his teenage daughter. And um, the other, the other fellow, his, his buddy, his old buddy from Vietnam, is got some physical problems. Um, and they just decide to go on the road on their motorcycles. And which one are you? The alcoholic that's having problems, his job is going to hell in a handbasket and uh, having problems with his teenage daughter. Yeah. And the, who plays the other guy? Keith David, who also was in Platoon. He that's was, right. yeah, he was King, the machine gunner. That actually gets de roasted out at the end. He's one guy you see leaving on the helicopter at the very, before the last battle. What a movie that was. Yeah. Okay, you characterize a motorcycle across the country, right? Mm -hmm. Did you shoot it riding across the country? No, we we shot up around Syracuse and the Finger Lakes area, and um, you know picked up some shots riding through the orchards and whatnot there. And we did interiors, of course, but um, we then later had to go out there to uh, South Dakota, and we picked up mm, the Black Hills downtown Sturgis, as well as the Badlands, which look like an entirely different state, and the prairie between the two. And I said, let's shoot them different directions to change helmets, no helmet, uh, you know, head, headband, no headband, to change t-shirts. And I said, it's like, could be anywhere going through Nebraska or Iowa or that area, and you know, and then the are other you, direction. <laughs> are you a biker? Somewhat, yeah. Like, I, I like, Going places, and my wife, my wife bikes. And was this a fun shoot? Yes, it was. It, it's got a lot of humor in it. It uh, does, huh? Yeah, it's kind of like uh, uh, Butch Cassidy, Sundance Kid sort of humor. You know, those two guys on the road, you know, constantly at each other, and a little bit like 
Nicholson and Randy Quaid in the last detail, that, that kind of humor. We're going to show a clip now of American Dresser with Tom Berenger. I see you got the bike out. Well, um, I thought you needed some attention. I wanted to take a ride. It's been way too long. Where are you headed? East toward Montauk? Or the North Shore? The great Northwest, Master Sergeant. I'll, I'll, I'll come with you. I, um, I, I, I really think I need to do this one alone. Why did you take this part? It, it was the kind of the family element about it, too, that I like. You're always working, aren't you? Uh, yeah, on something. <laughs> I mean, you, you become your star, character actor, but you maintained your status mm. in film. I like to think so. <laughs> Yeah. Any desire to go behind the camera? No. I've seen a director's life, and uh, <laughs> it's not for me. You've had quite a career, Tom. How'd you get in acting? It was at the university. I was like a sophomore. I think I was about 19. I heard an ad on the radio for uh, uh, tryouts for a play at the university theater, and I said, I told my roommate, I said, I'm going to go do that. And he goes, what school? Oh, university of Missouri. And... Uh, I said, well, uh, I'm going to go try out for that. He goes, come on, you're not an actor. I go, yeah, but Captain, when does one begin? You know, so I, I did and I got it. Four characters, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? And it was a stunning play. You were this visitor? I was the young, yeah, the visitor. The great math, play, the math great play to do. Oh, it's fabulous. I got hooked. If it had been something else, it might, uh, you know. You once told Charlie Sheen to move out of Hollywood. I did. Yeah. <laughs> you did, didn't you? Yes. I, but I actually lived in New York because I started in the theater there, and, and I operated out of New York, and that, that was fine and great for me. But um, and it worked all over the world, so what difference did it make where I lived? But uh, I just thought it would be a good idea for him because he's from there. You know, just, I said, why don't you get a house out in Montana or something or Colorado? Just someplace away from here. Yeah. Would have helped him. Yeah. Where did you move to? South Carolina. Why South Carolina? Oh, I like hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, Tom reflects on his long Hollywood career and reveals where he thinks the future of filmmaking is going. Stay with us on this edition of Larry King Now. We're back with Tom Berenger. American Dresser will be in theaters September 21st. You won an Emmy for The Hatfields and the McCoy. Remember that? That was a movie that was. Yeah. Yeah. You always get interesting roles. Uh, yes, think? yes. I, you know, whether they're commercially big or not, they're interesting, most of them, I have to say. I mean, what attracts you when you get a script? Well, I always have to say that, that, you know, like Hamlet said, the play is the thing. As he's coaching those actors <laughs> and playing amateur director, he's, he's saying that the writer, this was, of course, Shakespeare talking to his own actors. He says, you do what is written. You don't pad your part, you play it honestly. The play is the thing, and I and I go. The, the screenplay doesn't have it. It doesn't matter how good this character is. You just ever step back and do theater? No, but I want to. I'd like to do a really long run of a really good play. I was. I talked to Glenn Close about. I suggested it to her in Toronto. I saw her. I said, "Line of winner." She went, "Ooh." I go, "Yeah." I said, "All the parts are great." Yeah. Yeah. It's not just those two. It's all of them. And it's and I said. And it's, it's interesting. It's a comedy in two acts. It's called a comedy. Yeah. It is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Anyone you really want to work with? Well, I worked with Glenn before twice, but I would like to do that again. Any director you really want to work with? I'd like to work with Oliver again. Almost did once, but that got canceled. What was it like working with him in Platoon? Yeah, he was great. He, he was just... Um, he, he had to shoot it fast, but he, he was really brilliant with it. When we did scenes in the jungle, like it's the entire platoon in a combat scene in the jungle, uh, the second battle of the movie, and with the, the French church in the rain, and we finally get out on choppers and Elias gets killed. There's, there's different parts. So what he did was he had us in twos or threes and twos throughout the jungle, and he set up, he had like three cameras, and he just kept moving around, moving around, moving around. He goes, cut, I want to come back and do that again, and move on leave you there, and he would just keep going around, and it's a jungle, it's not a prairie, so you can't see everything, and he would go and shoot the other scene. Well, you set up again, whether there were explosions or, you know, where did, equipment. Where'd you shoot platoon? Philippines. What a movie. Oh, Charlie Sheen, 
we were, he and I were standing there waiting for a lighting set up and he was looking at the Filipino crew and he goes, you see those guys looking at me? I went, yeah, why, why are they staring at you? He goes, I, you know what, well, I was here when I was a little kid and my dad did Apocalypse and I think those guys were in the crew. I went, yeah, that must be it. I said, my dad was here too. He goes, what movie was he in? I went, Charlie, it was the real war. <laughs> I, <laughs> what? I said, liberation of the Philippines with, with MacArthur. <laughs> That's funny. He was in a movie, yeah, Apocalypse. Well, no, no. <laughs> you star in a movie called Firstborn, comes out later. Filmmaker Tony Kay is already talking about a sequel in which he'll use a robot as the lead actor. I haven't heard that yet. What, what is Firstborn about? It, it's about, uh, see, my character is a California politician whose daughter is married to a young Iranian guy, and then his father and mother come over to visit. And there's a reason they have to come, for medical reasons or something. So they come over to Los Angeles, and then he and I get into it about things. You, know, you were you know. quoted a couple of years ago saying, you think actors will soon be replaced by holograms. Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> Where do you think the industry's going? I think it's going towards that. I think that could happen. I mean, and you think about it, could they just steal Humphrey Bogart's image or John Wayne's and then create them again? And I mean, you could see him in a play or you could see him in a movie again. Um, and then they could control them. The producers could, could run the whole, you know, thing Technology. and control your acting, yeah. And who do you pay? I don't know if you'd have to pay their estates but you can invent actors too. And then you don't need them anymore. What's it coming to, Tom? I don't know, but I, I will say this, I don't really understand the way it works anymore. I, it's totally different than when I started. I, and I, I, In what way? Well, it's, I kind of like, I, I guess I saw sort of the end of, there were independent films and stuff, but I think I kind of saw the end of the studio films uh, and it's just different. I mean, it, they'll do a big, huge, elaborate space kind of movie production, but uh, they don't they do not do a lot of more intimate stories. Was it better then? I think it was. But I, I, I hate to sound like just somebody talking about, yeah, well, the new generation, you know, that I hate to be that way, but it's the business, too. It's not, it's not a generational thing. What do you like most about theater? Theater is always about the writing, and you, when you actually do it, you could do a new play with the playwright, or you do an old play and the playwright's not there anymore. But um, it's always about the play. It's about because the writing, and they are the stars, of the, the real stars. But when the curtain opens, it ain't the director anymore. No, it's not. It's up to you. Yeah, it is, and you have to you have to be your own editor. In a way, yeah. yeah. After the break, a round of our fan favorite segment, If You Only Knew, with Platoon and American Dresser star Tom Berenger. We'll find out about his guilty pleasure, if he has a secret talent, maybe the strangest job he ever had. We'll have fun with Tom Berenger right after this. We're back with Tom Berenger, American Dresser. We'll be out... September 21st. I'm looking forward to seeing this. Thank Gene you. Berenger go on motorcycle across the country. Are you still learning? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I remember my dad saying that. He said, you never stop learning. He, said, he was a printer, and he said and they'd keep inventing new things, including offset printing. They did, I remember when, it was, when I was a kid, it was uh, the hot metal type. Yeah. And, um, and he was one of the fastest typists I ever saw because of all those years at the Chicago Sun-Times doing that. You went to Missouri, University of Missouri. That's yes. famous for journalism. Yes, it is. But I didn't end up in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we play a little game of If You Only Knew. What's your guilty pleasure? I like read a lot of history books and stuff, and I'm well, fascinated by history. Who was your childhood uh, crush? Jane Fonda. Not bad. Barbarella. <laughs> Who would you trade places with for a day? Maybe Jack Nicholson. I'd <laughs> like just to see what a day in his life was like. Uh, it might be scary, but yeah. What's a luxury you can't live without? Well, sneaking into Barnes and & Noble and getting a couple more history books. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> What's the best compliment you ever got? Whitey Herzog, and manager of the Cardinals, said, you played, you played catcher, didn't you? And I go, I, I didn't. I said, I, well, no, nah, you were watching all the little moves and everything. I said, no, I said, I had a good teacher, like Steve Yeager, you know, was, was coaching. He told you? Yeah. 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 He worked on Major League? Mm-hmm. And he, and he worked a lot with Charlie and I, because we are the battery, you know, pitcher, catcher. And um, I, I said, uh, and I, I said, I'm a pretty good student. I said, but I, I said, I played third base. So, you know, I had to learn some new stuff. But I said, <laughs> yeah, you get kind of beat up back there. But you, then you kind of, you're like the middle linebacker. You're calling all the... You see the whole field. The only guy I see in the field. That's right. Yep. <clears throat> Strangest job you ever had. I was a bellman in a hotel in Kansas City. Were you a good bellman? I thought I was, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Something yeah. people don't know about you. Uh, my great 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 grandfather is very great 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 grandfather is very uh, in eighteen forties very famous um, poet and songwriter, and he wrote Gary Owen, which was the the regimental song of the Seventh Cavalry, and they still play it, and that when they salute, and you might remember the movie with the. <clears throat> Uh, soldier, we were soldiers once and young, and and when they salute, they go, Gary Owen, sir. They still do that in the Seventh Cavalry Regiment of the First Air Cab Division, wow. and he wrote that, and it was an Irish drinking song based on a fight that happened in in Limerick between all you know, these college students, and he just wrote this funny drinking song. That became the the band played that at Lincoln, Nebraska, when Custer said goodbye to his wife, and they all headed off to south uh, to Montana. Yeah, to get killed. Yeah. Yeah. In our final moments, Tom Berenger will answer your questions from social media. And don't forget, September 21st, American Dresser will be out. Don't go away. We're back with historian, actor, Tom Berenger. American Dresser will be in theaters September 21st. Uh, we have some social media questions. Randy Shinovsky on Twitter. Did you enjoy playing Mary McDonald's ex-husband on Major Crimes? I did. Uh, she and Kevin Spacey and I had done a play together uh, called National Anthems in, in Connecticut at the Long Wharf Theater. And it, it was a fabulous play, a two-act two act play. A very funny play that turns dark in the second act. And, uh, and she was phenomenal, and Kevin was phenomenal, and I guess I was because there's only three of us, and, and the... The, the play, the writing was phenomenal. Shame about Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any preference between television and film, or is it all the same now? I'm glad that we did the miniseries of, of Hatfields and McCoys be, because it, it was, I saw a screen, it was five and a half hours long, they put the whole thing together, and we all were there, all the actors and stuff. They showed it in the Arrow Theater in Santa Monica, and we and we watched it, and it was it was phenomenal seeing it, like in five hours. It was like going to The Godfather. That was four, I think, an intermission. Uh, wow. Uh, KP Music on tw twenty three on Twitter. Who was the best baseball player on the set of Major League? Pete Vukovic. Well, well, was actually playing a character, you know, the Yankee first baseman yeah. of the uh, actors. Of the actors, you know, I'd say I'd say it's a toss up between Charlie, who had been, it was a really good pitcher, and I have to say, like the first ten pitches he threw to me on the very first day he ever did this, not not in the movie, and he threw ten pitches, and nine of them were all on the edges of the strike, the strike zone, right, and one was a little outside. Really? So Charlie and um, Dennis Haysbert was pretty good. Yeah. Michael James Boyce on Twitter. What do you think of the remakes and retreads of classic movies? I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I and I have a scary feeling like maybe maybe I'll be dead then. But uh, like they'll do On the Waterfront and Casablanca, my two favorite movies. They'll remake those with somebody, and I just it makes me ill to think about it. Two pretty good movies. Yeah. Austin Kelly on Facebook. Is there an actor that you want to work with again? Steve Lang, who was in, um, and I ran into at the airport coming out here um, yesterday, uh, was in um, Gettysburg. He played General Pickett in that. And he's, he's a brilliant actor. Yeah. I'd he like is to work underrated. With him. Yes. Yes. 
Also, Austin Kelly also wants to know, what role stands out to you most in your career? A big one for me was Teddy Roosevelt in Rough Riders. Uh, it was the most exhausting part I ever played because he just wore me out. <laughs> uh, but it was it went splendidly for me. I, I, I ha just had a field day with it. I could improvise in him. I just, you know, I just... And he's one of the funniest presidents we ever had. So that was nice, yeah. And Dan Rogotsky on Twitter, what was the most rewarding performance of your career? They ask you, what's your favorite? It's kind of like asking, well, who's your favorite kid? Uh, well... This week, it's that one. Here's the batting order. <laughs> Next month, it might turn around. <laughs> they change places in the batting order. You grew up in Chicago? Yes. Cubs or White Sox? White Sox. It was South Side. However, I do have to say, I was rooting for the Cubs to win because it had just been far too long. What, 1908 or something? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, and I, I said, they've got to win. They've got to win, you know. And, uh, and I'm sure my parents, the rest of the piece, were probably rooting for the Cubs, too. Uh, up there, but um, I, I, I felt a little torn because, like Cleveland Indians, like it's become kind of an adopted city in a way, and they wanted to call and do interviews, not Chicago. And it was, I, you know, it was just weird. Yeah. yeah. And I go, well, Cleveland's gonna, I go, if they don't win, they're gonna win next year, you know, because they have a really good club. They're good I mean, they're they're fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Thank They'll you, win Tom. again. They'll win again soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to my guest, Tom Berenger. Be sure to see Tom in the upcoming film, American Dresser, in theaters September 21st. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. See you next time.